Paganati. I'm a drives and motion specialist for Turtle and Hughes. We are the rock automation distributor out of New York City metropolitan area and most of New Jersey. And uh, today I'm excited to talk about Rockwell's new hygienic servo motor design. And uh, this is one of the uh, episodes of our automation learning series that's being monthly posted on the Turtle's website and in our YouTube channel as well. So if you're familiar with the wash down or hygienic design machines, or if you work with machine design or machine builders, you've worked in a hygienic or a food beverage plant, you've probably heard those terms before. And the intent of this presentation is just to give you more content, more leverage to know what those term, what that terminology actually mean and where and how Rockwell can help you to achieve better performance. So moving on slide this is just a quick agenda of what we're going to talk about today we're going to start just describing a couple of applications where you see those motors being applied then uh, difference in the terminology hygienic versus wash down and a couple of the standards that regulate those or at least um, enunciate the differences a little better and then we're going to jump into the motor design for sure um, the dph motor and the characteristics some specifics of it electrical specification, motor data, comparison to other uh, motor designs, and catalog information. So let's just look at this, typical applications. Let me just, computer is kind of funny right now. Okay. So what are the typical application you would see uh, or require um, a hygienic motor, uh, washed out hygienic? What does that actually mean, right? So first, let's let's think of a food company. Let's say a cookie manufacturer. They're obviously aiming to be profitable and continue in business and all of that. But ultimately, uh, they care about the health of the consumer. So a producer's primary objective is truly to make sure that the food is safe and risk-free for the consumer. That's their core concern. So. And thanks for the to the FDA and other international safety agencies. There is this growing awareness of food safety that drives for more stricter hygienic design requirements just to ensure that the food is safe to, to use, to consume, either your food or a drug, whatever the product is. So more than ever, you see food producers using equipment to minimize the risks of food contamination, right? So today, many products are certified to function in those environments where there is raw food products associated with the sanitation processes. Um, but that doesn't mean that they are hygienic, right? So let's see what the difference is. So when you mentioned that, oh, I have a hygienic design or a wash down design, what does that mean? In food manufacturing and, and packaging, differentiation made between what is the food area um, where is the spray area or the non-food area, right? So focusing on the food area, that's the, the area that there is direct contact with the product. So the food area is, um, the food is unpacked uh, or pash partially unpacked. Uh, they, the food is particularly susceptible to contamination. So all the components and parts that may come in contact with this product, either food or whatever it is, must not adversely affect the product in terms of taste or tolerability. And uh, there is also the other areas that I mentioned, the spray area, which is typically where a uh, washed down product comes down to, where there's no direct contact with the food. So just think of that again, food area is where there is direct contact with the product. That's when you were looking to a hygienic product. So you see here, for example, the ice cream cones are being filled and there is equipment pretty much in direct contact with the with the ice cream cones. So you will look into applications like that. Um, next slide. So here is just a, a quick uh, interjection on um, institutions or sanitary standards, organizations that really have put together information, gather a group of people that have knowledge on the field to develop guidelines and there are two main groups that we're going to talk about today. One is the EHEDG, which is the European Hygienic Engineering Design Group, and there's the US 3A. Uh, those two are sanitary standard organizations. They're groups that they support institutions with a common goal, really, which is 
I'm going to promote hygiene in the production and the processing of food. So these groups, they help machine builders, producers, component suppliers, even us, right, raw coal distributors, to evaluate and design proper hygienic systems. So again, in red here, you see their goal is to truly just promote hygiene in the production and the processing of food. So now, finally, hygienic design. So what does that mean? So in addition to being washed down rated to withstand the liquid ingress that comes with all the cleaning particles and sanitizing processes that happens, a hygienic design should also prevent contamination of the end products. So let's say a food or pharmaceutical product, the um, that, that you can't have, for example, defects or folds, breaks, cracks, um, injection molded seams, joints, any type of material transitions that can't really exist in the hygienic system because those places are vulnerable to accumulator particles that can, in time, generate bacterial um, contamination. So you can have holes or depressions in corners. And it's an interesting fact here, if you look at their last piece, for stainless steel surfaces, there is a RA value of weak, equal or less than 0.8 microns. So what does that mean? An RA value just speaks to the surface roughness. So it's represented by an average of measurements that you take of the surface peaks and values. It just takes the measure, the mean of that, and you have uh, a constant number that tells you how smooth, how um, how, this, how smooth the surface is to be really easy to clean, because that's the, the main point here. It has to be easy to clean and pretty much deflect any um, substance, any liquid that comes in contact to it. And uh, obviously, a washdown design also is interesting to have a designated standard rating of IP69K, which is, you know, high pressure water jets, water streams to it and uh, preventing also from corrosive um, materials. And hygienic design typically, com typically comes with the stainless steel housing material, and that uh, you will see most of the time 304 steel, stainless steel design being used on those types of equipments. So let's look one more. So here's the motor. Right, here's the VPH motor, which is designed for a hygienic environment. Again, we just learned what does that, what that really means. Um, what, what does it mean to meet a hygienic a design? Remember, no defects, no folds, no breaks or cracks, seams. Uh, it has to be easy to clean, non-absorbent. So there is no metal contact in this motor. Uh, every, there is no metal to metal contact. Everything is highly polished and uh, it minimizes the liquid and particle accumulation or bacterial growth that happens. So you see here there is antimicrobial seal on the front of the motor, and that there is also the no metal to metal contact in all those surfaces. You see the cable entry and at the back of the motor where the heat, the, where the heat sink dissipation. Um, now, talking about a little more of the motor, so what does this hygienic design will give you? And then, again, uh, smooth surface design will reduce the liquid collection. Um, you would be meeting, you'll be meeting all these chemical resistance for harsh environment tests here on the left-hand side. Um, and safety and standards feedback, for example, if your application demands uh, you to meet a certain safety rating, safety standard design. Uh, you can look at those motors to um, give you a certain type of feedback, such as the absolute multi-term feedback that will give you SU2 category and PLD performance level. Um, one of the interesting facts about this motor, too, is the single cable technology. So what that, is, that gives you is that you have the motor powering and the feedback comes into a same conduit. So uh, you have multiple choices of how you can configure this cable and types of material that's used for the conduit from the distancing, if it's um, flexible or not. 
and that and how you can connect that to the the drive that you're going to run this motor with and speaking of the drives uh, these motors are designed to be operated with the kinetics 5500 series of drives or the 5700 series of drives that use the dsl uh, feedback um, type so again hygienic design motor differences between a uh, wash towel and you kind of get need to have that those differences clear because for, for some applications if you have just a spray area you don't necessarily need a hygienic motor you can just go with a stainless steel uh, wash down rated motor you don't need all those bells and whistles go one more and uh, here is a, a comparison chart uh, from the VPH, the new motor that was launched last year, and uh, the current existing um, lines of stainless steel motors from Rocco, the MPS and the VPS washdown. It's just a comparison, so you see the frame sizes and the voltage class available for each one of those. And the most importantly, you will look at the certification and the ratings on the bottom here. Uh, if it's designed to meet 3A or the European Hygienic Group, uh, you would definitely want to go with the VPH motor. But then again, if it's just a wash down application, you are not really in contact with the food or the, the product, you can use just a simple wash down design, not necessarily hygienic. And then again, environmental specification, this is just a breakdown of what the IP rating is for each one of those. Those are other VP motors. So the VP motors are Again, a series of motor, uh, motors that use a single cable technology and what industry they are focused to work with, right? So again, the last here uh, row, you see the VPH is intended to be used on applications that require meeting those standards, the European standards or the American standard 3A. Uh, or if you just need a food grade grease, for example, application, you can use the VPF motor, which is a food grade epoxy coated paint motor. Or if you don't have really any contact with food, you just go with the standard motor application. You also have other options to go with. And now just looking a little more on the performance here, um, we selected two motors that were similarly rated in terms of power and RPM. Uh, they have pretty much the same windings. So you see here that in green, the peak torque value for the VPH is just a little more, a little further than the MPS. But it come, when it comes to nominal torque, they are pretty much flat the same. And uh, this is just a comparison when you're, let's say you had an application that you used the MPS motor before or any other stainless steel motor, we'll be happy to help you to specify or design create a motion profile and understand what exactly you need in terms of torque or repetibility, heat dissipation. We can do all these calculations to understand what you actually need to accomplish and also obviously meet your safety requirements in terms of food uh, um, standards. And here again, this is just another slide, another comparison with the VPH, two different types of VPH motors. This is a higher frame size. So you see here that the peak torque in blue goes all the way to 30 Newton meters, and then in green goes to 28, and where the MPS is in red goes to all the way to 24. But nominal, um, I guess that the big picture here for you to look at is that the VPH gives you a higher peak torque than the regular MP designs that Rocco had in the past. But uh, in terms of nominal um, torque, it's pretty much the same. It's a little higher depending on the speed range you're running at. But uh, the peak torque is, is definitely from 10, 15, to 20% higher depending on the frame size that you're looking at. And now again, let's say you have your application. You know that you need to meet those designs, um, the European design, or you want to go with the us 3a design so you know you you want to select a motor you want to look at it what does those catalog numbers actually mean right that's a it's really a lot of letters and numbers on it but this is just a breakout for you to consult in the future there's also also a selection guide that we can go through 
where I can help you selecting this motor. But essentially is you look into the, uh, the, the first three letters is just for the series of the motor, VPH with the H standard for hygienic and uh, voltage class A and B, whether if you have a 200 volt rated system or a 400 volt rated system. And then the next digits and are parameters of the motor per se, the number of magnet stacks, um, the winding, how much the, the rated speed that you wanna accomplish and feedback type. Again, feedback type is also important. You wanna know how really precise you wanna be uh, if you want to have repeatability, if you're running at very high speeds, do you need to do registering? Um, it's important to know that kind of information beforehand so you select the motor with the proper design. Uh, once you get this, the motors, everything is built to order, obviously in, in closed in a, in a very <laughs> impressive fashion to keep these standards. It's not really feasible to go and change those designs afterwards after the motor is built. And uh, obviously it's also important if you wanna have a holding brake on it, just make sure that you notice that beforehand too. So you um, will include that to the design before the motor is built. Um, this is just a spreadsheet on motor design. Again, this motor goes all the way to 73 Newton meters as a peak torque, um, as constant torque all the way up to 18 Newton meters. And these are the a suggested drive matching part numbers that you will use with those motors. Again, um, the drives in this case are Kinetics 5500 and Kinetics 5700 drives are the drives recommended to run with this motor. Um, some extra information, um, here are a collection of, of links here that you can find some very useful data. The first one, obviously, if you're sizing anything, it's a for a rotary equipment, and that uh, you will find the kinetics rotary motion specification. That first link would take you to a very detail-oriented um, manual that's gonna give you similar spreadsheets that you see here, with a little more in terms of the design of the motor, what the features are, dimensions, uh, axial load, any other inertia, uh, information you want to look at will be available on this rotary motion technical data manual. And then there is, you know, accessories manual, um, installation instructions if you want to have, for example, a, 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 um, a seal to, to the motor, how you want to install that, the O-rings that comes with it. And uh, again, this, this information is available in Rockwell. The portals you can be you can find that on the product product library you can also just google the exact description you see here on the top kinetics for emotion technical data and that's going to be the first option you will find on google or you can just get in contact with us and we can certainly help but then again i guess the things to come away here from this presentation is truly okay we have this application it's in the food industry uh, does it come in contact with the product? Uh, does it come in contact with the food? Yes or no? Uh, is it in the food area or is it in the spray area? And that's going to break down what path you're going to take to select the motor for the application. You don't need to go with the hygienic motor if you don't need to. But uh, at the same time, you can't have just a wash down rated motor on a hygienic application because then you would not be meeting all those standards and requirements that were described here by the European standards and the US 3A standards. So again, if you have um, any questions regarding the design and when to apply the VPH motors, you can certainly get in contact with us. Um, our, my name is on the, the beginning of the presentation. You also have contact um, at the end of the presentation to get in touch with us if you need. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you have any questions, um, the chat is open for questions. And uh, you, you guys can send me a question in the chat or you can talk here. I'm going to open the mic. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lorenzo. Well done, sir.